Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by the garage and checking out what we got going on. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a basic service on your riding lawnmower. Easy. Skill set is like a one. A uh, few basic hand tools and uh, we'll get this thing done. So, let's get the wrenching. All right, y'all. Uh, first thing you want to do, safety first. Make sure you pull the key out. It's out of the ignition. Uh, I wait. You know, some freak accident. You know, something happens and uh, the uh, motor would spin over or something. Uh, we're not gonna have our hands in any place that should be in danger, but we don't want to turn the motor over or run the motor after we drain the oil out. So then, after you do that, you need to find something to drain your oil into. This just happens to be a uh, container that I get rotors in and the deck is removed from this um, from this tractor and uh, that was from the when we were doing the blades on it so uh, I do have the do have the uh, deck off. You may have to turn the tire and set your container on top of the deck or whatever but like I said the deck's off this right now uh, I'm going to sharpen the blades on it, but uh, I've already got a video on using my American Blade Sharpener on sharpening the blades, so we're going to do the oil change and stuff while it's, while it's off. So, first thing, don't need any fancy tools, I'm just going to use a crescent wrench. Uh, you want to look around the motor, you'll see a tube sticking out. Uh, this, is, this is a John Deere GT262. Uh, this basic service like this goes for... All your riding mowers don't matter what brand it is um, just get the hood open hopefully you're checking your oil so you know where the oil you know dipsticks at somewhere around the bottom side of the motor there is going to be a drain uh, some of them have a tube that comes out like this one does some of them have a quick open with a drain pointing down uh, just there's all different kinds but you'll see you'll know what it is whenever you see it. it's at the very bottom of the engine uh, so all we got to do, well, let me get some weight on here. I don't know if you guys helps you guys or not, but it helps me. Put it on a little counterclockwise. Now it might be tight. There it just pop. And just slowly hold in on your drain plug. If you got this kind of drain plug, and you'll feel it kind of skip over. And then you're ready to start draining. There it is. Make sure you got some rags hanging around. You know, wipe your hands with, lay your oily parts on so you don't get it everywhere. I always take the oil fill cap loose. I don't know if it helps or not, but, you know, it uh, it won't hurt. So, let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit and show you guys a little better. Sorry about the shaky camera. that any better for y'all? Yeah, you can see it's draining out there. So, all right, this may take five, ten minutes. Let it all drain out good. Uh, myself, I like to warm it up, get the motor warm, and then drain it out. Uh, this motor is warm, so you know, just get it up to operating temperature. Just be careful; the oil will be hot. So. All right, I'll bring you guys back once this is all done draining, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys, while this oil is draining, I just want to take a second and tell you that uh, I'm showing you how you guys can do this at home. Uh, when I do this, you know, for regular customers and stuff, I do have an oil extractor. It goes down in the dipstick tube. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's push mowers, riding mowers, big tractors, whatever. Um, I extract the oil out that way. Uh, you don't need that fancy stuff, even though it's only like 20 bucks, 20 or 30 dollars to buy one. If you're doing this at home, you know, a couple times a year, once a year, you know, this way works perfectly fine. So, uh, I just wanted to tell you all that. So, uh, and also, if, uh, you know, you should sharpen your blades a couple times a year. Uh, if you're not confident in doing it yourself, there's lots of places out that, out there that do it cheap 
you know, uh, five, ten bucks a blade. Uh, so, you know, you can take them off yourself, save yourself some money. You know, they don't have to come pick the tractor up or whatever. Same thing with the push mowers. You don't, they don't have to take, you don't have to take it to them. You know, a few easy hand tools. You can get them broke loose. Take them off. Take them, have them sharpened. So, just wanted to give you guys a little heads up why I'm doing it this way instead of using my old extractor. So, all right. This is almost done draining. We'll bring you back here in just a minute or two. All right, y'all. This is slowed down to a slow drip, so we're going to go ahead and put this back in here. I finger tighten it up to till it stops, and then put my wrench back on it. And you don't have to you don't have to hurt these things. Just snug it up. That's all you got to do. Uh, you know, get it too tight. You can strip the threads out, or the next time, either you or wherever, go to change your oil, it can pull that pipe out. So, I got that all done. Wipe it off good. That way, after we get the oil change and everything done, when we run it, we can double check it and make sure it's not leaking. If it does have a little bit of a weep to it, put your wrench back on there and snug her back up again. So, all right. This one has an oil filter on it, so we're going to move to the other side of the motor. And I'm going to show you how to get that off and uh, change that filter. So give me a minute and we'll get back on it. All right, guys. We're over on this other side of this engine now. Uh, you can see the oil filters down here. Let's see if we can zoom in here and get you a good shot of it. There you go. It's right there. I put some cardboard up behind here because we are going to lose a little bit of oil out of here. And rather than it hitting the frame and running back under, I just put a piece of cardboard for it to run past the frame and and drip down off. Uh, you know, get it up in there. Hopefully, it doesn't make too big a mess. So, uh, you want to, this unthreads, and if you can't get it with your hands, you know, if it's too tight. Uh, you don't need an oil filter wrench. Uh, all you need is a piece of length of rope. Uh, tie a knot in it, make it a loop. And I hope this is going to work because this is shiny, shiny rope. But uh, take that, put your screwdriver through it, and just twist that thing up. Get it back on there. Get it as tight as you can. Once you're good and tight, lift up on it. There you go. You guys seen that thing spin? And then you can work your screwdriver out. And then you should be able to unscrew it by hand after you do that. So there's a little tip for you. Don't need no expensive tools, like I said. I'm trying to show you all that you can do this at home in your and there's the oil coming out. I do have my drain pan down there. Let it drain a little bit there. Alright. Now, make sure you guys dispose of these properly. Take them to your local auto parts store or whatever. Uh, you can set them in your drain pan. Uh, I usually, I have a drain area that I have that has mesh and just turn them upside down because you know they will have still have oil in them so one thing you can do is get you another small bowl or something put you some shop towels in there some newspaper anything paper towels just something to let that oil drain out so you don't make a mess and then you know put it in a plastic bag or whatever and take it to your local auto parts store and like I said most of them most all of them have a recycling program where you can take your used oil so, all right. Now, this is a K-Series 17 horse Kawasaki engine, and it takes the uh, 1394 oil filter. This is a Napa Gold. Uh, I prefer the Napa Golds. They're made by Wix, so I'm a big, big proponent of Wix filters and stuff. Now, there's a gasket on here, right here along this. It's a rubber gasket. You can use a little bit of your used motor oil, it won't hurt a thing. So make sure you lube that up 
because when you put it back on you want to make sure well first thing you want to make sure is that rubber gasket from the old one didn't stick to the block and then when you're sealing that up you want to make sure that when it goes on it doesn't bunch up and you'll have a leak but so and then it just uh, just threads back on like that until it makes contact and then get rid of my cardboard here and make sure if it has oil on it you dispose of it in the proper way don't be a you know don't be don't so once it makes contact about another quarter half a turn something like that just good and snug because you're going to check it again afterwards you know after we get the oil and stuff back in it and uh make sure that uh, there's no leaks so while we're right here air filter is right up here which you guys can't see because i got you zoomed in air filters right up here now this one has two screws in it some of them may have one screw in them some of them may just have little lift tabs uh, but you'll see a box like this it's separate from the engine uh, usually as your air cleaner in it most of the time they're marked uh, this one says you know it says it's an internal or has a you know it's the air cleaner so this one you just take the two two screws loose And if your if your oil filter comes in a box, you can use the oil filter box to drain your oil. Uh, I just happen to use the air filter box, and this one this is what this air filter looks like. Some of them may be foam, all foam. This is, happens to be paper. So uh, we did get a new one. Uh, this is the uh, part number for it. It's the uh, twenty four thirty nine. Uh, again, Napa Gold, made by Wix, and uh, there's foam rubber on this, around both sides of this one. Make sure that foam rubber isn't in the, you know, stayed on the old filter, and make sure that there's no big debris or anything down in there, and it's just as easy as popping it down in there, making sure it's seated, and we'll drop the air cleaner cover back on, pull these out. Now, the ones that have bolts sometimes have rubber seals, you know, this one here is just a plastic, but sometimes they have rubber on them. Just make sure you don't lose that rubber. You don't want a, you know, small unfiltered air getting down in there. So... And again, you don't have to hurt hurt these things down on, you know, just take it till it's snug, you know, don't break the plastic and stuff. So, all right, so we got the new oil filter on, we got the air filter on, got the old oil drained out. Next thing is we're going to put some oil back in this thing and uh, I'll grab some oil and we'll go back around to the other side of the tractor and we'll put that oil in there. All right, y'all, back over on the original side of the motor that we started on or engine whatever you want to call it motor engine same thing if you look it up in the dictionary so pull your dipstick out and that's how most of them are going to be uh, some of your v twins will have a oil fill on the valve cover uh, this is a single cylinder like i said it's kawasaki there's a oil you know the dipstick here that's where you put your oil in at and they take different quantities depending on what size the motor and stuff is uh, and I buy my oil in bulk this engine calls for a 5W30 um, it's written right on the side of the engine it does not give me a quantity so we're going to start out with a quart and let it sit drop down the motor we'll double check it see if we're at the full line or you know if we need to add a little more and uh, so like I said I buy mine in bulk you know not a brand specific so I mean it's good quality oil but uh, I'm not gonna promote what it is just uh, 
go slow make sure you don't overflow it and spill it everywhere a little funnel always helps like I said I'm gonna start out this is one quart 32 ounces and you can get this when you get your oil filter and stuff at your auto parts store and you can go to the auto parts store to get these parts uh, most all your auto parts stores have a small engine division and they can get the parts uh, if you want brand specific you know a, a Kawasaki filter and a Kawasaki you know air filter and oil filter and stuff by all means go do it go buy it um, myself like I said uh, I prefer the Wix filters from Napa and Napa has a really good small engine division so they can get me most every part I need like I said the, the well, if you watch the other video about the deck belt or the drive belt this thing that's where I got it from so all right by looking at this we are just barely on the dipstick so I'm gonna go ahead and get another quart tapped out and then uh, I'll probably dump about half of that in we'll start it let it run fill that oil filter up over there and check it after it uh, after we shut it off so let me uh, get another quart tapped out here and we'll come back put that in and then we'll run it all right y'all I went ahead and added another quart and a half of oil and uh, dipstick here pull it and we'll wipe it off stick it back down now this one you don't spin back on to, to check your level so and we are halfway up the add mark the little there's little hashtags on here we're halfway up it so that would be approximately another half a quart so, got my oil here. Alright, got that dumped in. I'll put the dipstick back down in. No leaks on the drain there, so pull that back out. And of course, the inside of that tube is going to be covered with oil, so I'm going to stick it back down in there real quick, pull it back out, and we are right at the full mark. You guys probably can't see it on there, but we are right at the full mark, so we're good. I'm going to go around the other side and check that. Uh, oil filter make sure that uh, there's no leaks on there and uh, basically we're done with the oil change and stuff uh, now you can do the spark plug the owner of this tractor said he put a spark plug in it last fall mowed like one time with it stored it for the winter and uh, brought it to me so we're not even going to mess with the spark plug um, I find that usually unless the tractor is running like crap or the engine's running like crap, spark plugs are usually good. But if you want, you can change it. So uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, it does require a specialty socket to get in there and get it out. Um, it's just a standard spark plug socket, but sometimes that's not something everybody has laying around. So 
Let me go around the other side and we'll check that oil filter and see if she's leaking. All right, y'all, back on this oil filter side. Uh, grab a light here. No drips. Run my hand underneath there. That's used oil, so it's not leaking. So we got her good. Uh, that's it. Good and serviced. All right, y'all. There you have it. Uh, out of service, you're riding a lawnmower. It's just a couple basic hand tools. You know, don't need anything extravagant. You know, and it can be the you know cheap old crescent wrench, piece a little piece of rope, and a cheap screwdriver. You know, no big deal. Uh, hope you guys learned something. Hope you have the confidence now that you can go out and do this yourself. You know, get out there and wrench on something. You know, don't be a couch potato. You know, if you uh, don't feel confident enough, at least now you know what it takes. You know, so if you bring it to a person like me or any other small engine guys, uh, you know what it involves to, to change the oil and, you know, why it, why it charges what we charge. Um, now, normally on a, on a service like this, just doing the oil change and stuff, I get between $65 and $75. Uh, that's one hour of labor uh, and the disposal of the, you know, getting rid of having to take the oil and disposing of it. Of course, you know, now I got a used oil burner, so I don't have to take it any place, but, you know, the filters aren't real cheap anymore. Oil's not cheap anymore. So, uh, it, in the air filters, you know, uh, all that stuff adds up. Uh, I believe uh, in the uh, estimated on the oil, oil filter and the air filter, uh, I've got about, uh, $25 in that those parts uh, I may be wrong on the oil and air filter but like I said I buy my oil in bulk so breaking it I you know to break it down into the to a single quart or two like this took two quarts uh, it's roughly four dollars a quart so uh, another six seven dollars for the oil filter it's, uh, six or seven dollars for the you know so it, it adds up so um, yeah, that's, you know, that's why we charge what we charge. Now, mo more other places may charge more. Um, like I said, I on this tractor, I have changed the drive belt. I'm going to sharpen the blades on them for them. Uh, it'll all be rolled into one big, you know, price. But, like, if you bring your blades to me to have them sharpened, I charge 5 to $7 a blade, depending on how bad they are. If they're not real bad, it's just straight out $5 a blade. Uh, if they got a lot of nicks in them, need balanced, um, you know, I'll charge $7 a blade. Uh, if you bring me more blades than just one, you know, like if you bring me one push mark blade, it'll probably be about $7 for just for the setup, time, all that kind of stuff. But if you bring me three three blades off your riding mower, you know, uh, your spare blade and a regular blade for your push mower, you know, uh, the price goes down a little bit because I'm set up and I can run through them and it's, you know, it's not taking time to, to set up and set up the sharpener and everything else. Even though that sharpener is easy to set up, it does take time. Time is money. So anyways, appreciate you all watching. Like I said, I hope this gives you the confidence to go out and try this yourself and, uh, you know, get out there and wrench on something, man. That's all I got to say, you know. Uh, don't be a couch potato, you know. So, anyways, thanks you for watching. If you like this, please, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up. That's free. Don't cost you a dime. You can also leave me a comment, you know, something else you want to know, something else you do different, you know, good criticism, you know, leave it down there in the, down there in the comments. If you're one of the people that uh, hit the dislike button, don't be shy. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Why you don't like the video? You know, don't just you know, yeah, dislike you know, and then run away like a coward. <laughs> Anyways, if you're new to the channel, new to the garage, please hit that subscribe button. There's a little bell next to it. Highlight that thing so you get all the notifications of all the videos I put out, whether it's working here in the garage, cooking in the kitchen, or hanging out on Sunday nights the live stream. We talk about everything. If you got questions, that's a really good place to come in and ask them. You know, sometimes you know we, we I mean, most of the time we got a really good panel, and we can we can answer most questions. Uh, so you know, 
rather than leaving a comment on the, you know, leave a comment on the video. But if something you, you know, you need more in depth on, that's harder to, you know, type out or whatever, come in the live stream. Ask us live. So we can, we can, like I said, usually answer just about any question. So, all right, I'm done rambling on. If you guys made it to this point in the video, really appreciate it. I love y'all. Take it easy, and we'll catch you all in the next one.